And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon, you nerd. Hey, this is Mike from 424recording.com, and in today's video, it's part two of making your own DIY cassette tapes at home. In this video, we're talking all about recording, mastering, what tapes you need to make your own tapes at home. So let's get into it. First thing you gotta think about when you're putting out your tape is the length of the tape. Now tapes are sold as the total amount of time on them. So if you have a C26 tape, that means that each side of the tape is 13 minutes long. So when you're putting out a tape, you need to make sure that your material fits the side pretty well. Otherwise you'll have too much time at the end or a song could get cut off in the middle if you haven't planned out you know, how long the songs are or which songs are going on which side of your tape. So it's definitely something to think about as you're making your tape or before you even order your tapes is how long is the tape gonna be and what songs are gonna be on what side of the tape. The next thing you need to think about is, do you want tabs in or tabs out tapes? Depending on the type of duplicator you have and depending on the tapes that you buy, specifically this one here I got from National Audio Company, it's tabs out. So if you look on here, uh, I don't know if my camera will focus onto it, but there's two little holes here on the on the left and right. And when I'm uh, duplicating these, I have to put a little piece of tape over this so that uh, I can record onto these. Otherwise, the deck won't even recognize that there's a tape in the deck that can be recorded to, and you won't be able to record to it. I spoke a little bit about how to set up your sides of A and B, which is basically making sure that the amount of time that you have with your songs is gonna make sense for your release. You know, if you have one side that's like 14 minutes and one side that's 12 minutes, chances are you're probably gonna wanna get a 28 minute tape and then add something to the end or add a little skit or add a hidden track, you know? It's it's a little bit different than just putting stuff out digitally or putting something on a CD. It's more like putting something on a record where there's two sides that are can only be a certain length and you kinda wanna fill up those sides as much as you can. So that's all stuff that needs to be figured out before you even go about ordering these because let's face it You don't want to have to order a hundred of these and then find out. Oh, well now my songs cut off in the middle or now I didn't plan this out properly So this is the Nakamichi CR1A that Matt from Reverie of Palms sent the channel Matt Thank you so much. Check his band out reverieofpalms.bandcamp.com Basically, here's my NSA test tape that I got from Edward Oh, I forgot to mention too, you definitely want to have a picture, hand-drawn picture of Mac so that he, um, you know, he'll, he'll make sure your cassette dub goes well. You're going to want to set the tape up like I was saying before, get some tape on there, pop it in there, and we're going to get it ready to record. You can adjust the level depending on your deck, depending on the features it has, but, you know, just as a quick overview, I have uh, the NSA Not So Alamo tracks on here, the master. Uh, basically, if you want to use your phone, you just need to hook it up via a cable. This is an iPhone SE, so it has that hookup, but on the back of this deck, it just has uh, an RCA in, and depending on what you want to record from, say you want to record from your 4-track, or maybe your DAW, or maybe an iPod, maybe another tape deck, you just got to hook it up accordingly. And on your source um, of the audio, just make sure that it's loud enough and also that um, you have the right cables to hook up to it. Cause obviously this needs an eighth inch. Some other things are gonna need RCAs or whatever. So you just press play and now we can see the levels over here of what's gonna be onto the um, recorded onto the tape. And for this tape that I got from National Audio Company, I was trying to do it around, I think around here so that it wasn't peaking any louder than plus three dB. To me, that's what sounded good for these tapes. I'd recommend doing a few different tests. Like I said, this is my NSA test tape that I got from Edward. So, you know, it's working out. You gotta do your own tests and figure out what works for you. This isn't a hard and fast rule, which is why I'm a little hesitant to say like, yeah, plus three, I mean, that's what worked for me. That's what worked for my source material. And it's gonna depend for you. So, and then once you have whatever volume you wanna record at, um, you just press play. Press play on all your devices. Let's do a different track. Uh, and then you press play here. And now we're recording onto the tape. That's how this deck works, but you can also monitor your signal through the headphones here. Definitely recommended, and like I said, definitely do some tests of it. And make sure you pat Mac for good luck. So Jason's setup is multiple decks using multiple iPods. 
to record more than one tape at once because obviously the other thing with recording your own tapes is unless you have a special dubbing machine or a special recording machine that records them at faster speeds, most likely you're gonna have to record the tapes in real time, which isn't a big deal. You can walk away, do other things. You know, Jason has a lot going on at his house and he just sets them up, gets them to go, maybe puts a timer on so he knows when to come down and flip them over and it's set it and forget it once you figure out your levels and what you wanna record your tapes at. So here is my tape sides mastered. Basically what I did was I just put a limiter on my final mixes and leveled them all out so that they were all even uh, in volume when they're gonna go to the tape. I wasn't too concerned about having them super loud for the tape, because obviously loudness wars and stuff like that. But you know, somebody who's enjoying the tape is not going to be swapping it out like crazy or comparing the volumes of different tapes to it. So what I think matters the most is that the listening experience on the tape itself is congruent or the levels are equal as the tape is playing. This is what my final EQ curve looked like for my particular masters of my tape. Uh, and this is based on reading about the tape and obviously also listening uh, to what it sounded like. I went through a lot of masters and EQ curves to finally land on this one. You know, based on my digital mix, like cutting the lows this much and this drastically really helped with the tape. And this this the final sound I wanted it to sound like on my in the places I reproduced it. You know, basically these sort of drastic uh, subtractive EQing, I thought made the tape really sound great when I recorded to it because of the, like I said, the bass response of the tapes is amazing. So uh, it was actually like way too bassy when I was testing it. And then I bumped the high end a little bit, uh, basically just by about three, around 1700. And I think the tapes only go up to about 17,000 uh, for their frequency response, so I just roll them off anyway. I guess it doesn't really matter, but you know, you're gonna have to listen to your own tape and figure out what it sounds for you. Please don't just copy this and slap it onto your tape and expect it to sound good uh, because this is based on my own mix and the tapes that I had. I mean, maybe it'll work for you, but I just want to say this isn't like a hard and fast, like this is the mastering curve for all tapes. It's like this is based on my mix, my masters that were going onto the tape, and also, um, you know, the EQ curve that I thought worked for the material that I was putting out. And just one really other quick idea about mastering is it's really easy just to line them up, you know, figure out your sides. You can set up the loop in Logic or whatever DAW you're using. You know, mine comes in very close at 1258. Uh, which is crazy because it just fits because my tapes were 26 minutes and I was really lucky that this first side worked out and then the second side I wound up ending I had this uh, ending it with this hidden track that I had it very long knowing that well I can always adjust it so like if I didn't include this track or you know wanted to have a little space or whatever, uh, which is, I feel like personally, it's, I think it's hard to write something to fit it unless you write something to fit it. So, uh, but this is a pretty good way to go about uh, working on your final master is just bouncing them all down separately. I basically have two different ones here. The top ones are for the cassette, the bottom ones are for the digital. And then you can listen to, you know, the variations between the songs in volume. You can adjust them if you need to. You can add EQ if you find things are out of whack, but, and then you can add your fades too, you know, and then you just basically can bounce down the entire um, cassette master, digital master from here. Uh, if you're doing, you know, longer one sides, and then, you know, these five tracks are basically this side A, and the, these five are side B. That's what you're gonna need to do is get all your tracks lined up and then unmute them and then bounce them down. And if you're doing digital, you just basically slide this over to whichever track you're working on at that moment. And then you can figure out the spacing too between your tracks. If that's something you need a hand with or uh, you're looking for somebody to do, you can hit me up 424recording at gmail.com and uh, we can talk about what you need done and, and costs and stuff like that. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna be talking about artwork and cases for cassette tapes, everything you need to know about that. So if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I wanna thank Jason from Painted Blonde who put out my album, Not So Alamo, recently uh, as a thanks for his help with this series. Thanks a lot, man.
Godspeed, my friends, and make sure you do something you want to do today, all right? Mm-hmm.